Hi everyone, hope everyone's well and welcome along to another video. It's been absolutely ages since I've made anything um, and this is mainly due to the hot weather we've been having over here in Europe. Um, certainly in the UK, um, I got into the car at lunchtime the other day and it was 100 degrees Fahrenheit which is what, 37, 38 degrees Celsius. Um, absolutely hot and it's been that way for a couple of months. Um, we've also had no rain for a couple of months. Um, it finally broke um, yesterday really, we had a huge great thunderstorm here. Uh, lots of rain came down but it's still quite warm and the, the house is warm. Um, I'm, my workshop is in a sort of like 12 by 10 um, spare bedroom upstairs um, and it, it gets hot anyway. Um, and if I were to film anything, I'd need the fan. Sorry, the yeah, I'd need the fan off, which I've had on all the time I'm in here. Um, I'd, I'd have a, like a couple of lights on, so it'd get really warm. Um, I didn't really feel like you know I had a go, but um, I didn't really feel after that like filming anything. To be honest, it just got so hot. Um, you know, I've been messing around for 10, 15 minutes, but it's just no. No fun at all here, you know, sitting here all sticky and horrible. Um, we don't have air con over here as a rule, you know, in uh, in the UK unless it's a, like a large, large commercial or public building or anything. Cause it's just so expensive and we wouldn't really use it. But it's been a highly unusual summer. Um, we had an awful start to the year where it didn't stop raining until like April. Um, and then, well, since the end of May, it's been absolutely boiling. Anyway, I'm I'm waffling on. Um, I've got this Keithley meter. Oh, sorry. Before we go any further, um, I just want to update you on that GEC radio I was last working on, which is here. I will. Uh, I need to do a wrap up video on this one. It is finished. Uh, I had a bit of a disaster. I was working on um, working on like another set, and this was at the back of the bench, and this other set has like an aerial on top of it. It's a um, transistor set, and I was looking at this radio, and I flipped it over to look at the underside, and the aerial must have gone through this fabric here, and then I must have moved this other radio around because there was a nice little tear. Well, there was a hole, and then like a tear. So flipping idiot I am. Um, so I had to get all the speaker out of this and put some fabric on the inside and I've put some PVA glue so it's quite solid and the original repairs up here somewhere and now I've got another repair here so this one uh, when it's finished is gonna be boxed up I think um, it's very fragile this you know it's a 60 year old fabric and it's sort of got like a plastic on it I think you know in the in the sun over the years so it's pretty you know the the underlying mesh uh, fabric mesh is probably you know gone it's probably you know very very weak um, so I think I'm gonna box it up and keep it out of the sun otherwise I think it will just rot um, but anyway so that's what one idiot did to this radio right so that one's coming anyway so let's have a look at this. This is a Keithley 179A. I picked this up on eBay uh, a few days ago. Uh, it arrived this afternoon. Um, I've not owned one of these before. This one was quite a good price and the seller packed it really well. Um, like an inch thick of foam either, either side um, and it, he put it in a static bag and everything. He says it's working but um, now you're going to join me in seeing if it actually does. Right, so we're all plugged in, and um, here's the magic moment. Put it on volts. AC, DC. Right. Ah, nice bright display. No, it's not. Not settling down at zero, is it? Oh, 
I'm assuming it should settle at zero. And this was to not replace, but I don't really use bench meters a lot, but this one was such a good price and they have got a good reputation. I've actually got an old Solotron 7140, which is, you know, that's pretty accurate meter, that one, for its age. Um, what I'm going to do is, uh, I might put this one on top of the Solotron, so I've got like a couple of that there. Right, so at least it's working, there's no magic smoke. I didn't, the unit itself on the top is quite dirty, we'll just have a look at it in, um, in further detail in a minute. And I notice inside here these are on your jack plug um, sockets, sorry, your, well your sockets is quite corroded on the inside, or tarnished, so anyway let's um, see what I've got a little AD584M voltage reference here and um, I'll connect it up and see how accurate it is. This has been calibrated, I don't know when, there's no date on it because it's got the calibration stickers sealing the screw holes. Um, it must have been like a business unit because I don't think any homeowner really calibrates their their stuff so there's a calibration sticker on the back and which has been broken and then there's two more which are unbroken covering the screws on the bottom and to calibrate it you need to take uh, the screws out to get the cover off so it's um, was actually last calibrated and no one's touched it since anyway so this voltage reference gives us 2.5 5 7.5 and 10 volts and really useful actually so let's turn it on. There we go. So sticking it up. I guess I means it's over range. So 2.495, that's good, it's ballpark. It should be 2.5005. 5 should be 5.00175 according to the calibration sticker on the back. 7.5, 7.502 on the back of this, and 10.002. So this seems a little bit low compared to this. Um, people have said that they're not sure whether these stickers, these calibration stickers, are all in fact the same. Um, don't know this this one looks you can see that you won't see it but I've, I've actually had a look and you can see like an indentation as if someone's actually written this out um, you can just feel it with your fingers as well someone's actually written that so whether they got some some person on the end of the line just writing out random figures as long as they're fairly good I don't know but there we go so Possibly these need looking at. Um, on Martin Lawton's site, he has a video of him calibrating one of his friend's 179s, and in the comments, or I think he mentioned himself, that uh, the switches behind or the switch contacts really need cleaning, and that would be the same with any um, multimeter, I guess. You really need to make sure your contacts aren't tarnished. So at least it's working, and it's not too badly out. Right, I've got a 100R resistor here. Brown, black, brown, yep. Um, let's see what that says. Hmm. Nearly. That's no, that's like a 10% resistor or whatever it is. It's not, um, sorry, 5% resistor. So, you know, point B, I just want to see it's basically working sort of correctly. Then we might go through and calibrate it within the realms of what I've got to calibrate. And this, that should be a 680 R. Hmm. Not bad. So, it seems to be working. At least in registering reasonable, reasonable answers. Um, so what we're going to do 
is uh, I'll stop this and we'll have a look at the inside quickly um, and then we'll close it back up or well, I won't close it back up, I'll get the top off and I'll scrub the lid right let's have a look at this case uh, Lee on the inside the top of the case is quite filthy someone's written in um, indelible pen there uh, on the top so I guess it was used within some sort of uh, commercial business or maybe um, military use um, it's got a calibration seal on the back there's no battery switch on this um, these could be fitted with like an internal rechargeable battery pack um, lead acid uh, batteries um, so this seal has been broken here unless the battery switch is under that of course um, but it has got two seals on the bottom and it's missing uh, two of the feet here which I can just you can buy stick on feet which I'll probably do so I'm going to lift the uh, lift the calibration seals if I can, if not I'll just go through them yeah, I'll just go through them assume these slotted screws no, not slotted screws, they're just didn't feel very positive. You usually get one screw that's a Phillips head, don't you? Right, let's take them out. They're quite long actually. Didn't think they'd be It'd be as long as that. That's one side. Let's see if we can lift the top up. Yep, there we can. The top, and you see the original plastic is quite sort of tan colour anyway. But this has got loads of ingrained dirt in it and I don't like dirty equipment. Right, let's have a look at this then. Um, this sheet here, I'll move the handle. This sheet here has got um, all the calibration instructions on it. There's a earth clip that is actually pretty sharp. And there we go, there's the, there's the insides. Now I'm filming this, as I've mentioned before, I've got the camera up above and I have to reverse it in my um, video software um, but there's the inside and I think these are original caps I'm not sure but yeah that's original I don't think anyone's been in here by the look of it there's a hundred megahertz clock here power supply coming in here obviously bridge rectifiers caps don't look too bad actually this one there you go March 1982 I've got that yeah so there's some I don't know if I turn this round that might be right is it that way around so I've got um, dates on some of these little, I guess these are relays, are they? Yep, probably. Um, got dates of 1982, 82, 81, 81. So this one looks like early, maybe March 1982. There's a big chip there. There's a ICL 71 CO3 ACP1 with a date of uh, week 1 of 1982. There's an intersil chip there um, made in India 
week 43 of 1981. Hmm, interesting. This must be where the battery pack clips onto, which sat up above here, and I imagine makes the unit substantially heavier. Right, so there's the inside. I don't think there's a lot to do here, if uh, if anything at all. What I might do is I might change these filter caps. Might. But, um, just needs a little bit of a clean, there's a little bit of dust inside but not too much. And uh, I don't know if we can see the display without destroying things. Need to clean behind these buttons anyway, there we go, that's the faceplate off. And there's the large display, the large LED segments for the display. But as I say, I want to clean all around here anyway. Probably the back of this screen could do a little bit of a wipe over. Hmm, very interesting. So what I'm going to do is going to get all this cleaned up. And um, oh, that was handy. What's that? Just fell off. And um, oh, one of the spacer things. And um, then I might take a chance and try and adjust some of the calibration settings on the voltage, DC volts range. Right, here we are with the meter all cleaned up. Um, I cleaned all the switchery and stuff behind here and lubricated it. Um, and then I cleaned the top of it all up. I got rid of that indelible pen with some um, alcohol and the rest of it was just cleaned up with household detergents. I then went through and did the DC and resistance calibration. Um, I used my little voltage reference here and um, I took as many digital meters as I could find um, and just took a reading off each of them at the four different ranges this produces and just averaged them. So um, I ended up with this little bit of paper here um, and this is the 7.5 which um, is on the 7.5 volts setting um, and I calibrated to 7.501 which is what I've got here um, this is actually about I'm, I'm actually filming this about a week after I did the calibration so um, I've been on holiday since so we've got it working um, there and it's all in calibration for the resistance I use my uh, decayed wrist resistance thing, a big old box, and it all seems to be working quite nicely now. Just change it up to 10 volts. There we go. That's that should be outputting 10 volts. So I calibrated this. Um, as I say, and it all seems to be working nicely. I didn't want to. I did start to film the calibration, but it was it was lots of looking at bits of paper and going back and forth uh, through the manual. And uh, excuse me. And um, there was quite a lot of reading and then stopping. And I thought, well, you know, if I film it, um, I might as well, you know, do it as I'm, you know, as I'm working rather than worrying about filming it all, the, you know, all the time. Um, it wasn't all that interesting anyway. So there we go. That's another working meter. I haven't changed anything inside it. I've just cleaned it. So for 30 quid, well worth it. Right, thanks for watching.